There were many people that were making conviction, they cannot listen, they were so arrogant and expression, sorry for this. But since those people started nurturing us, you know, breaking peace among us, the community have changed. Geon National Volunteers and the CPC, their work in the communities include resolving uh, conflicts, all right, land disputes uh, associated with uh, boundaries, associated with uh, uh, natural resources, uh, associated with concession companies having access to particular land that uh, family contesting, all right. So they tend to resolve those kind of relationships, those kind of conflicts, and then promote relationship between the divided parties. We sometimes go out in rural houses and educate our people on the issue of peace. Sometimes we have community meeting, inviting community or stakeholder to be in a meeting and listen to some of the peace messages that we are preaching. The thing I have been between me and Alice, Alice, like Alice go be my son, I go talk it then. She started abusing me. Like how can me and he and, and she and myself get inside? Then we making a flower. We were making flower. We were making flower. Then the GM, GMV come there, they step up and they came out to the palawas and to the youth, the elders. Then so we go to the palawas, the judge the case, and we now come together. Now we can speak now. From the time the GMG and the CBC came. The, 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 the attitude of the various communities from their performances, from their interaction with the various communities, from their sensitization, it has brought changes. Cases are not going to court like before. And most of our cases have been resolved in this community by the CPC and the JNV. I connects them because there are some cases that uh, when we go there, it needed to be settled home. But you see the people coming into my office way. But since they took over, I'm seeing them reducing the burden by calling young folk together. I don't usually see young folk bringing one another to my office. The village that we are in now and the town, we were not understanding each other because we have problems among us. So, we try to we try to hide a problem from them, but some people came out and they told the gym volunteer that there's a problem here that was that was getting their work to be difficult. And then they search and search and they found out the problem and they were able to make peace between the town and this village. So those are some of the impact and good things that they did from that town on. We used to the village used to clean up on their own. And the town cleaned up on their own. We never used to join, but from the from the intervention we begin to start doing cleaning or camping together. This is the kind of uh, achievement that we want. And remember, next year is going to be election in this country. And the more we strengthen this kind of structures, the less issues we have when the election is approaching. And then remember also, very soon, Amil is going to be withdrawing. The more we have this kind of structures in the community to build peace, to calm people down, to bring people together to do good things for the development of their community, the better Liberia we have. So as a country that had emerged from 14 years of devastating civil war, it's important for the community to be the champion of building that peace. And to build that peace, it's important for the community to use dialogue as a method. And it's also important for the community to be very much aware of what are the issues that can bring about conflict. The community should be able to do an analysis and understand what the conflict issues are, all right? And take preventive measures, measures that will avoid a violent conflict, measures that will be undertaken to promote social cohesion, measures that will be undertaken 
to ensure that the community rally around themselves, around issues, around their self-initiatives. Can teach me A B C S O S O one two three and peace. When I be fourteen class, no trouble listening. I'm gonna be feeling one and all. Listen that I learn about peace. If, if my friend be fighting in the community, I'm going to go and divide it, so I'm going to bring peace and money. I have peace. My friend will be friend in the class. I will not be proud. I will not friend in the class. And my friend is friend. I will, I will, I will talk to Mr. Son. I will talk to our teacher. This is the level we teach the children how to read and write and then also to identify alphabet. We teach them peace by true gifts. Like for the ECD, when the kids come together, through their play-based activities, they interact. They build a sense of relationship with friends. They love, they forget some local scratch that they might have from home. They forget I'm black, I'm white, they forget. I'm this strap. They play together. They interact, they build trust with each other because they play games together. They must work as group in some games they play together. There have been a change when it comes to the training of teachers. Teachers themselves getting to understand how to use virtual aids in teaching the students at that level, which is an extra change I, I saw in the classroom. You know, I see the teachers using flash, you know, virtual aid like flashcards with various letters. Students are pronouncing the sounds of the alphabet in which these things are not easily done in our rural, rural setting of Liberia. But with the intervention, with the training provided by Right to Play to the teachers, I saw the practicality of the identical lesson in the classroom. In the ALP class, I learn how to spell it, I learn how to read, and I learn how to write. If they are never in the air of class about peace, my teacher told me that we should not make confusion in my class, and no one should fight in my class, and use all of the community, no one should fight there. So right now, whatever we do, whatever plans we make, peace building is a component of it. It is where the ministry is directing her effort to ensure that Within your curriculum, within all of our documents that we do, we make sure we target those things because we want to ensure that all of the efforts we're making in educating children, if we are not peaceful, all those things will come to waste. Uh, we work with ECD, that is the early childhood learning, three to five years. We also work with ALP, that is the, uh, the accelerated learning program, mainly for overgrown children. We condense the six years training or school into three years from level one, which is uh, first and second, level two, third and fourth, and level three, fifth and sixth. ADC program is well appreciated in this district in that uh, we educate our people and during the education, what the, the component of peace building that's why it's so important to me, because it helps in our, um, the students being able to uh, make peace among themselves and even in the community. I never knew how to spell my own name, but right now I can spell my own name, Charlotte, capital S-H-A-L-O-T-T-E. -T -T -E. In my house, sometimes when my children come from the school, they wanted that in the North class, ABC class, I never knew anything. 
But they start to run now. I can see my children cafe go. Sometimes when they make mistake in the cafe go, I can tell them, let how it's supposed to be. Been recruiting and training college graduates, all right, and deploying them into high schools where they help to increase the capacity of the high schools with respect to teaching different topics and different subjects. All right, so the PBA, in a way, have contributed to improving the educational sector. The National Youth Volunteer Service Program have had numerous of impact and in such a way that. They are trying to link with the students in order to resolve uh, petty conflicts among us. We are involved into the area of education, peace building, and also sometimes providing some mentorship to our peers that we work with. 175 teachers in 13 counties, and these are, these are places where we've been having difficulty uh, getting qualified teachers uh, in the counties. Before the volunteers could come in, we have a lot of challenges, especially when it comes to the manpower. We had where you will have one teacher teaching what we call combined classes. But now with voluntary service and being, we with degree helping in the field of education is helping the children a lot. Most of them now they are getting studious and are taking their lessons serious because when they see us in the classroom, young men like, like themselves, they feel moved. The presence of the National Volunteer is motivating me to not even stop at the high school level, to proceed to the university or college, to even be a master degree holder. The National Youth Volunteer teaching me, teaching helping me a lot, more especially this in the own free year. When I was in the 10th grade, I know I used to understand most of the topics in faces. But for now, I can solve some problems and faces. Well, being here is a great help to the young people first. Because, number one, seeing a young woman coming from all the way to Morovia to come all the way to Maryland, you know, they feel very happy and they feel very encouraged. They didn't have their basic credentials in teaching, but they've been trained in pedagogical skills. Uh, that will help them to be able to teach in the classroom. As a national volunteer, there are a lot of things we do, but a major one is the teaching. We help the school administration to carry out some teaching. There are some spaces they had, some gaps, so we came in and fill in those gaps. Some of these gaps have been filled. You don't see these, these, these challenges being so intense as it was in the past. We have established lots of clubs. And some of these clubs are the health clubs, we have the press clubs, the agricultural clubs, and then the school choir. So those are, those are just some of those greatest developments that we are undertaking in this institution. So the coming in of the national volunteers into our school system has an immense contribution and impact to the system. Number one, they are all young, and so when they are out there working with other young people that are staying at a high school level. They easily understand their language. They easily impact their life. The volunteers in my school, they are all young people. See them as well as equal of mine. I feel that what they have gone through, I can go through the same thing and become more than what they are uh, doing in the rural community. The youth center was initially established to, to serve as a hub for young people, where young people can come uh, daily and congregate and discuss and have fun, have activities, educative activities. The youth centers have served as uh, a meeting point, a rallying point for young people. The young people are very happy to see volunteer assigned at the youth center. 
Because more often, young people come here for research. Some of them want to get all the information and don't know that way forward. And then they come here, ask us some questions, and then we'll help them in the process. Which, of course, made the youth center very active. This youth center has been, you know, impacting my life because of um, in the past years, I didn't know anything about computer, and then um, the volunteer that came here, they try and then um, help us in such direction. And today, I, I can access information on computer. When I came here before, I knew I had to even greet someone in Kran. And for now, I know how to speak to somebody in Kran. Like in the morning, you see your friend say, Zonzi, say, I want to disagree. You see, all those things I learned there.